Excellent. Okay, now we're okay, he's just opening. We're going. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you to everyone who is uh, watching. Uh, it's great to have you here with us. Hello, everyone. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome to the virtual opening for Cherry Blossoms, a textile translation, uh, the 2021 version. My name is Steven Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council, and I will be your host this evening uh, to talk with some of our amazing artists and jurors and organizers uh, to talk about this beautiful textile art show, which you can see a little bit behind me, which is uh, currently uh, now on at the Silk Purse Art Center in West Vancouver. Just open today. Today is our first day. So thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, before we get started, uh, I think it's important that we uh, acknowledge uh, and uh, say thank you uh, to our host nations uh, for letting us be here as guests to gather on these beautiful lands um, to celebrate arts and culture and nature, which is uh, part of what this exhibition is all about. And uh, here, uh, on North Shore, we are grateful to the Squamish Nation and the Tsleil-Waututh Nation and the Musqueam Nation. And uh, as guests, we are so very honored to be here and thank you so much. Uh, and so, Cherry Blossoms, a textile translation. This is the 12th year uh, that we've had this show at the Silk Purse Arts Center. And uh, the West Van Arts Council is so thrilled to do this every year. Um, we had a bit of a skip year last year, but a lot of things skipped last year. So we're mm -hmm. happy to be able to have it back again uh, this spring. Um, and the Cherry Blossoms are still up, which is fantastic. So as I said, uh, it's at the Silk Purse Arts Center, which is uh, 1570 Argyle Avenue in West Vancouver. The show is on until May 2nd, uh, and you can come check it out Thursdays through Saturdays from 12 to 5 and Sundays from 12 to 4. And we have uh, some wonderful artists here with us. Uh, we'll just do a round and everyone can wave so people at home can see who you are. We've got uh, Bonnie Addy and Julie Garcia, and Catherine Nichols, and Patty Kirsch, and Judy Vallette, Deborah Zibrick, and Terry Ask. Awesome, we're so happy to, to have these crazy talented artists with us. Um, the work that they do is inspiring um, visually and technically, um, just You'll get to see some examples later and see all of the amazing details and ideas that go into this work. Uh, so we'll get things, oh, if you have any questions or comments uh, about anything you see or for any of our artists, please uh, drop them in the chat and we'll get to that throughout the evening. So let's start off with Bonnie. Bonnie, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about uh, how this exhibition started um, and the involvement of the co-producers of it, of uh, Vancouver Guild of Fiber Arts and Fiber Essence. Right, Stephen. Well, we started the Cherry Blossom in uh, the exhibit in conjunction with the Vancouver Cherry Blossom Festival, which um, is also going on in Vancouver at the moment. And it started um, to celebrate the cherry blossoms in the city of Vancouver. Uh, in the 1930s, the mayors of Kobe and Yokohama uh, sent cherry trees to the Parks Board in Vancouver to be planted beside the Japanese cenotaph in Stanley Park to honor the Japanese Canadians who had served during World War I. And then in, uh, the in 1958, 300 more trees came to Vancouver, uh, donated by the Japanese consul at the time. And this was reported in the newspaper as an eternal memory of good friendship between our two nations, which I think is very nice. There, we don't have that many trees planted within the city now. Uh, a lot of them just grew too old and they've been replaced by other trees, but we do have loads of cherry trees and they certainly are at the peak at the moment. And this, this uh, exhibition doesn't just magically happen. There are so many people who deserve a great deal of thanks. Um, the West Vancouver Community Arts Council with Jennifer and Stephen, 
and they welcome us each year, which is lovely. And the artists who are so willing to share their work and all of the work was ready for 2020. Of course, we know that didn't happen, but the nice part was that every artist was willing to keep their work for this year. We had a jury comprised of Deborah Zebrick, Catherine Nichols and Elizabeth Harris, and they are the ones who have a vision and make it work. Um, the Vancouver Guild of Fiber Arts and Fiber Essence always has people who work hard on this. Um, we had a hanging of the work on Tuesday, which Deborah Zebrick and Joanne Waters and Monica Brammer were so, so very helpful with our very patient Stephen. <laughs> he is so good to us. Uh, Fiber Essence was a cooperative of textile enthusiasts and we had a gallery, excuse me, in Dunbar for a number of years to promote, uh, to promote textiles as the art form it is. And when the building was being demolished, we shut that part of our endeavors down and focused on supporting exhibits such as this one. So the mission statement of the Vancouver Guild of Fiber Arts, which is um, a guild, um, is similar to that of Fiber Essence, which was to unite and collaborate with textile artists and artisans. So I, I do want to thank all of you who have joined us this evening. It, it isn't worthwhile doing all this work unless there are people out there to enjoy what we do. So thank you. Oh. So I think Catherine has some information for you regarding during yes. it. Yeah. Right? So we actually have two of the jurors here, um, but we'll have Catherine, uh, if you could, and Deborah or anyone else who wants to jump in, if you want to talk about um, how the jury process uh, comes about, how you go about selecting uh, the artwork. Love it. Thanks. Stephen, thanks, Bonnie. I didn't realize it had been 12 years. That just seems like, oh, wow. It's so exciting to know it's been going for that long and still going strong. Part of the, the fun part of the jurying process is Bonnie usually makes the phone call and we get the invitation to come and you never turn down because Bonnie's lunch is amazing. So it's the, the bait she uses to get us to come and, and, and act as jurors for her. But we also get the privilege of being able to view the work that gets sent in from all across the country and from other countries as well, which is really an exciting thing. So there's always three of us. Um, I sort of have been there for the longest. Maybe it's time for fresh blood. But um, And we try and be, I know Bonnie is careful to choose artists who are come from different points of view, um, different styles of work, different areas of expertise. Elizabeth Harris um, is a potter, painter, ceramicist. So she brings an entirely different point of view to the textile work. I know Deborah's work is very, very different than mine. Um, she's quite embroidery focused, whereas I'm often more quilt, for lack of a better word, focus. So we, we all bring a different point of view to the work, which makes the jury, I think, even stronger. Um, Elizabeth doesn't have a lot of textile skills, but she's brilliant in composition and structure and those fundamentals of, of good art and design. Um, it's a fairly, well, by the time it gets to us, it's a fairly simple process. I'm sure that much, much, much computer work goes on behind the scenes but we are presented with uh, a series of images um, on a screen and we view them blind. So we have no idea who has submitted the work. Um, we just see the entry. So we like to see an overall image and then a couple or more if required details of the work that we're viewing. Um, and Monica, Monica Brammer patiently has answers all our crazy questions. Um, provides us with information like sizes and materials, artist statements. Uh, it's the first round is, is kind of fun because that's the for sure round. That's the yes, the no's and the maybes. And those are pretty easy. The yeses are very easy. The no's are slightly less easy. And then it's those maybes that we know we're gonna come back to. So we'll whip through, well, whip. We'll go through the first time 
and it's not whip it. We are slow. Viewing everything, make our three piles, get them all sorted out. And then we have to go through the maybes. And some of the maybes can elicit um, conversations, warm conversations, heated conversations sometimes. And we will negotiate, we will barter. And worst case scenario, we vote. So it's always good to have a nice steady odd number of people. Um, reserving, we're always reserving the right to, for Bonnie and, and her committee and Stephen to say no. If the work that comes in isn't up to snuff, doesn't meet the standard, or is completely different than what we have viewed on the screen, which with the wonders of computers happens. So it's, um, we sometimes, and it seemed like we occasionally, we ask Bonnie to compose wonderful emails to the artists asking for more information. And we do that mostly because of image quality. And it's, it's one of the technical hurdles that um, I would love to be able to get all artists to overcome, to be able to put their work out there with all the gorgeousness and accuracy and, and clarity that it deserves to be judged honestly and openly. So it's a wonderful process to be a part of. It's like getting a sneak preview and, and I've really enjoyed being a part of the jury for this year's show. Wonderful. Thanks for the peek behind the curtain. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> it's, I know what you mean about uh, digital images aren't always the best way uh, to, to view artwork for our juries as well. It's, uh, it's, it can be tricky. <laughs> it can be very tricky. And these very, very talented people are often hobbled in the technological department. So um, yeah, it's kind of my mission to go along and see if I can nudge artists into taking those good photos and being able to submit them clearly to, to galleries and, and get their work out there into the world and have it be seen, show it off to its best possible advantage. Totally. Yeah. And, yeah. and even Stephen, when we get really good photos of work, when we actually get to see them in person, it's different again even better right mm -hmm. never yeah. worked, always better yeah. yeah always yeah that certainly was my experience uh when we were doing the hanging uh, of, of the pieces or making suggestions as to how they would work in the gallery space uh it, it was amazing uh to see the pieces live if you will or in person compared to my memory of what they were in the images i, I couldn't remember now. Yeah, I couldn't I, remember, Deborah, <laughs> what we had looked at. It seemed like oh, I, I, so I did. long ago, but it's coming back to me when I started sitting down and writing yeah. a few notes this afternoon. I started to remember some of the pieces we had looked at. Yeah, yeah. I certainly echo um, Catherine's comments and, and really want to give high fives. You can't give enough high fives to the organization that's behind the scenes for Bonnie and Monica uh, to, to make our job so easy uh, mm -hmm. at jury uh, and and again just the, the the whole sense of that first visceral response for what the artist is trying to convey um, through an image uh, and then coming to rest with does it does, does it have the right possibilities uh, for inclusion so I, I, I totally echo what Catherine described to us which was that yes no maybe and, and then the spirited <laughs> conversations about why the piece had a right, or what could be done to give it that place. Uh, and that's in the, show. the dangerous line that we yep. cross over all the time because yep. we're not tasked to be teachers. No, we're not tasked to be mentors to the artists. We are tasked to purely jury what is in front of us. And yep. that's a very difficult line for, especially for me. I, I well, operate I as a teacher mentor and, and that, Okay, if I could just tell her to do, you know, add a little here or take a little there and it would be perfect. And then you think, nope, 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 not my job. <laughs> but the, the, the interesting thing of all of that is that each one of us has that response and each one of us Absolutely. likes things that others don't. And I think as a jurist, it's, it's always 
really, really the need to be mindful to make sure that, you know, what might not appeal to you, but if it's got good structural bones of art, mm -hmm. then you need to let it fly because <laughs> uh, it, it, it has a place, it has a voice and it, and it needs to have a chance to talk uh, at the exhibit. And, and again, I, I have to tell you how delightful it was uh, to see all of these pieces, what, almost two years later? <laughs> Seems like it's actually just a year later. Uh, and, and I went, oh my goodness, it, it's amazing. <laughs> it, was, it was really, really, really quite delightful. Thank you to art, all the artists uh, who participated and allowed us to show their work. Definitely, yeah. And it was uh, an amazing selection of artwork. and. Uh, Everything that Deborah said about seeing it, you know, kind of for the first time was, uh, was pretty amazing. It was my first time seeing it um, when everyone came in to, to load it in on Tuesday. Um, and to echo what Bonnie said, thanks so much to, to everyone who helped uh, put the show together. It's, uh, it was, uh, it, it was, it was a big task for you. Um, this is, this is a little interesting. We usually don't have this much um, input. Um, from artists in our exhibitions. They usually, cause it's usually a group of two or three artists. And so we figure out how it works together. But uh, this is such a specific show with such a, a very distinct point of view um, featuring so many artists that uh, the wonderful volunteers who come in and help uh, who are, they're mostly artists or organizers. Uh, they come in and they do it. And, and my job is just to kind of help them, you know, with space or hanging materials, or maybe, maybe this could go there, but really just kind of wait for them to, to ask what my opinion is. So uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work that they do. And it turned out, it always turns out great. Um, but this year has turned out super, super wonderful. And on that note, we're going to take a quick little tour of the exhibit so everyone can get a, a quick look at everything. Um, and hopefully it will entice you to uh, come on in and see everything in person if you are able. And uh, we have uh, really great health and safety protocols in place. Um, our occupancy is six. So if a bunch of you come, you might have to wait outside uh, and have a nice view of the beautiful waterfront instead and while you wait your turn. But uh, definitely if you can make it, uh, come on in and see it because it's absolutely stunning looking. So let's get this video going. Okay. This was, yeah. This is the wrong video. Okay. <laughs> I am so sorry that is. Uh, that was uh, a bonus oh, wow. exhibition. <laughs> there we go, cherry blossom. There we are. Okay, let's 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 do that again, everybody. Okay, we were just talking about you know everyone uh, getting um, all of the. Uh, you know, technology and everything. And it's, it's, everyone needs a little help every now and then. <laughs> What's so interesting is from the first year of doing this exhibit to what we are seeing tonight, there's been a change each year. There's, it's different, but we did start way in the beginning, right, Judy, with big quilts. Everything was very large and uh, lovely and beautiful. And now we've just swung to smaller and there's quite a um, transition to quilting plus embroidery or strictly embroidery or strictly quilting, but usually smaller. Yeah, there was a lot more wall space, I think, in the Dunbar Gallery. So we're now yeah. adapting to silk purse size. That's right. Yeah. But also there's been this gradual trend over time where quilters do more uh, stitching, embellishing, I guess. Stitchers do more quilting and combining them, the techniques, it's lovely. And it's nice to see more artists be able to get into the, um, into the space as well. Smaller yeah. pieces just opens the door for so many more artists to be able to exhibit together. I think it gives a lovely opportunity to to get in there and, and be shown.
Yeah. That's good. Sorry, uh, just uh, my video has kind of uh, disappeared. If, if yeah, if anyone uh, continue on talking. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves for a bit. Well, I think the textures, uh, how many years now have I been in five, I believe? I think four, so, five? Patty. Yeah, I was yeah, and I think that. Yeah. everyone's textures from, you know, couching plus and, and inks and and discharges in the same piece as well as stitchery and all the different uh, fibers that are in That's inclusive true. of all of the above. Yes. I, um, the smaller pieces may look small, but they do Just take a long intensely. time. There's, it's slow art. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It is not quick. It isn't just as intensely worked, if not more so. Yeah. I agreed. Totally. Yeah. I was trying to think how long I've been doing this. Catherine, I wondered if you noticed your work getting smaller. At least 10. Um, my work has gotten smaller, Judy, and it's adjusted. Um, the pieces behind are, are three pieces that were... Um, older cherry blossom pieces right. and they're all hand worked, which is what's happened in my work as the years have gone by, I've just sort of dropped into this format and it's just gradually evolved. The, the work is getting narrower and narrower and just more and more heavily stitched. So yeah, I just thought I, these were floating around and I thought, oh, they could have a little outing for, for tonight. <laughs> they should. <Yeah. laughs> apropos for the season anyway i thought they looked very spring-like yeah yes they should be up there's something that's very small mm. <laughs> as most quilters do i like to use up all my scraps so these are fabric bits that i'm making into uh, bookmarks and they're lovely and oh, the they're wonderful box. yeah that's my smallest effort <laughs> Today. Yeah, I haven't managed that amount of, I can't get that small. I can't hang on to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we will uh, jump ahead and we'll get back to the tour. Um, but right now, let's uh, talk to some of our artists about some of the pieces that they've had in. So you can get a, a little bit of a, a closer look at them and uh, hear about their inspirations and techniques. So let's... Uh, Let's do this uh, alphabetically, I guess. So that would be uh, Terry. That would be you up uh, up first. Cool. There. Yeah. So uh, tell us about this beautiful piece. Is she there? Yes, I am. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who's, who's ever done, done that? Um, yeah, so every every year, because I've been participating in this for um, for a few years. Um, so January, February, I start thinking about what I'm going to do this year. And I was inspired this year by this uh, um, print on, that I've used on, in this piece. And I just drew other solid colors based on on that print. And um, I was, I, I usually do a smaller piece as we were talking about um, the gallery is small and small pieces fit in well. And I was just in the mood to do something tall and skinny. And, um, and circles are one of my favorite design elements. So there I went with circles and, uh, and I did some vertical, um, um, my, uh, mat matchstick quilting. So very close together vertical lines, just as a um, contrast to the circles. And um, yeah, and that's my piece. That's wonderful. Yeah, no, it's it's very dynamic. It's uh, it's great. How how big is it, Terry? Uh, how big is it? Sorry, think, hard question. I think it's about. It uh, actually, hang on a sec, and I can tell you. I can go. I have a <laughs> post oh. from last year that um, 
that describes how I made it. It's 12 inches by 31 inches. Oh, thank you. You can see it over your shoulder, Stephen, on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. And I want to thank um, Judy Vallette for making me aware of this exhibit. I believe it was in 2011. I wandered into her studio during a studio tour and she had her the brochures out for the call for entry for this exhibit. And I grabbed one and submitted a piece and almost every year since then I've been putting work in. That's awesome. Okay, so next we have Oh, that's the wrong way. There we go. <laughs> Next, we have this beautiful uh, piece by Julie Garcia. Julie, tell us about this piece. Okay, well, um, as you can see, like the most of, I, I, if you're familiar with my work, most of my work is landscapes. I, when I saw the call for entry for um, this particular exhibition, I was thrilled because I happen to love embroidery and I love French knots and really tiny handwork. So the idea of working on something in the theme of cherry blossoms was right up my alley. Um, when I start my pieces, um, I the skies are painted on a cotton. So they're painted like a watercolor really. Um, and I use an acrylic paint so it can be um, color like heat set. And then the piece is built from the back towards the front. And then all of the layers are hand stitched. The whole piece is hand stitched. There isn't any um, machine work done on this at all. Um, and then I do all of the embellishment after. And um, if I can just point out a couple of things that I tried differently this time, um, this was a technique that I, we, I was at the Houston quilt festival, I guess it was two years ago. And I took a class with Judith Baker Montano, and I've taken a few classes from her in the past. Um, but this time she had a very interesting, like, and it just worked so well for what I was doing, but her technique of doing tree trunks was, you know, just take this big handful of yarn and she twists it and then just allows the yarn to sort of untwist at the ends and it the way that the yarns just sort of fall and you kind of play around with them a little bit um, works so well for twisted tree trunks and branches and so what I started doing is mixing yarns with a, there's some silk ribbon and just some different colored threads in that twisted bunch and then basically it's a chain stitch that is just rows and rows and rows of embroidery over top of those twisted um, yarns and it's that the, the the additional embroidery that's put over top that holds it all into place and then what you can do is then add in all the little tiny branches and stuff with the embroidery thread um, you know as you're stitching down all of these trunks or all of the branches um, anyways and then uh, the the tree in the um, foreground is silk ribbon um, and those were some hand dyed silk ribbons that um, I had made a long time ago, but of course they were pink and it was the kind of thing I don't use very often. So I was thrilled to be able to pull out my pink uh, dyed ribbon. And uh, in the background, that's more of like a pearl cotton uh, just done with embroidery threads. And, and so with the, with the tree in the background, I don't know if you can zoom in on it or if you have, a, uh, anyways, if, if you have the ability to, but you can see some of the, um, there's some sort of extra greenery and branches in the background. And I basically had painted out some cheesecloth and placed it in behind all of the French knots before I started doing the French knots. And so it just sort of fills in a little bit of the background without uh, too much effort. So it gave a lot more, um, I don't know, just a little more bulk to the tree before I started doing the knots. So anyways, and in, in my pieces, I like to use obviously like a lot of batiks and hand painted ones. But in this particular piece, this, this uh, water is a tie. 
um, I love using old um, found articles of clothing, specifically men's ties are great. Um, and on the bench, that as well is um, a men's tie. So, and uh, with, with things like that, I find them particularly useful in the detailed pieces because oftentimes the warp yarn is a um, polyester or sometimes the whole uh, tie is a polyester. And so they burn very well. So I often will cut and just burn the edges, which seals them. And then I don't have to turn them under and I don't have to fiddle around with them um, fraying. So um, anyways, I do like to use old recycled men's ties. <laughs> so yeah, so that, that's, that's the piece. I was thrilled to, to actually find the um, call for entry for this one. It was through the Fiber Arts Network. I feel like it was their newsletter that, um, that I saw the call for entry in it, so. That's awesome. Because uh, even though uh, this exhibition is in West Vancouver and uh, the Vancouver Guild of Fiber Arts are one of the major uh, producers, um, not all the artists are from the Vancouver area. Right, because Julie, you're from right. uh, Manitoba. I'm from Winnipeg. Yeah. 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 And um, actually, last year during the opening, I actually had a full trip for my whole family. We had booked through spring break to come out to Vancouver, and I was going to be there for the show and deliver my piece. And um, just COVID hit, and then we canceled all of it. So, anyways, it was unfortunate, but uh, my plan was to actually come and see the gallery. So, Maybe next time. Yep, totally. This is this is a wonderful piece. Thanks. Great, great. Our next uh, artwork and artist is uh, Patty Kirsch, and this this fantastic piece. Patty, tell us tell us about your work. Thank you. Um, well, that's my great mother from Podbiel, Slovakia, and uh, she used to cultivate flax um, all the way through to woven linens. And um, I wove, instead of her eyes and instead of her wrinkles, I wove in a youthful, my daughter's eyes and less wrinkles on the nose um, to invite younger makers uh, into um, understanding that tapestry is full of texture, um, can be pictorial, so you can apply, a new artist can apply their style to this medium. And um, it's, it can, um, uh, so that is what I did. Her name is, this is Masha. And um, she has silk lips, silk eyes, linen babushka, mixed linen and wool for the textile in the background. And um, my mom's mom, Kamoya, um, great grandmother. And so anyway, um, she has a, um, a babushka, which it, it, in Slovakia, it, that is the, the scarf. And um, that is with linen and um, I wanted, I sketched it first and I wanted to make it look like it was a sketch. And so I, um, I wove the ground at the same time laced in the green. So, and those are cross hatches. So as I was weaving, horizontally, I was also lacing them vertically up. And white on white, I didn't know if it was going to show well. Um, white on white, but it worked because the linen babushka and it's the wool, uh, the wool dress and the wool background um, with a little bit of linen in the, in the wool background um, material. Uh, it was the combination, it was able to give a little enough difference. Um, there are there's so many things like um, shifting warp, uh, shifting warp pairs and weaving over two under two or over two under one over two under one, but still having it as tapestry. 
And um, so anyway, the scarf was really a lot of fun. And then the cherry blossoms, I placed in there with um, a mathematical formula called rabatment. And because I feel like composition is really, really important and I don't just want to ch chance the composition. So I used rabatment to place um, at the cherry blossoms. And so that is making squares within a rectangle. And that's basically what rebatment is. And the di there's different intersections of where you can put the pop and everything. So that's where I put the cherry blossoms. And the cherry blossoms are, um, I brought a fabric and you can't, I don't think you can see behind me, but I, I it's right back there. It's um, an old um, textile from, um, um, from my family from Podbeel. And um, it had a very long float over and that was wool. And I, as I wove, I then laid in the, the float of red. And then, you know, as I was weaving across, um, you all could also can see sometimes there's uh, diagonal lines and I would, that was twine across as it went, as I was weaving vertical, uh, as I was weaving, Horizontally, I was weaving vertically and I was weaving uh, diagonally and lacing and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so this show makes me do this. <laughs> so anyway, I'll let you be. And if there's questions later, that's fantastic. <laughs> so. It's wonderful to hear the, the personal backstory and the sort of family connection and inspiration for the art. That's really cool. Thank you. So, ah, so Catherine, uh, our, the jurors also got uh, a piece in, which is pretty cool. So Catherine has this, as she was saying earlier, um, really long work. So this is actually two <laughs> because it's so long. There's a, we had to divide it in two to get it all in. So Catherine, yeah. tell us about your piece. It turned out a little longer than five feet, I think, because at one point I had it, I was holding it up and I thought, oh my goodness, this is as tall nearly as I am. I thought I probably lost it. Um, it is all hand stitched. And um, if you can get close to it and you see all the threads are dyed um, in the similar color palette to the dyed piece of fabric. So it's a long, thin um, piece of fabric. It's actually a cutoff from a sheeting mill, a, a company, Empress Mills, they're called in the UK. And then every now and then they sell off these bundles, which are strips of the off cuts of this sheeting fabric. And it's absolutely glorious to work with. So I just got lucky to be at the right place at the right time and got a bundle of it. And it's a, about nine inches wide. And I left the full length of the piece, the full length of the fabric. And I dyed this, I had great fun with this, dyeing this. And you'll see the progression, um, Stephen, if you move from this photo to the darker one, what I did is that's the bottom section and the lighter section is on top. But I took some kebab sticks, the things that you use on your barbecue, those lovely um, bamboo-y, like sticks and I um, soaked them in Procyon dye, a rather intense solution of Procyon dye in my chosen color palette. Um, I had a couple little buckets going, well actually I had three or four little buckets going and then I let the sticks all absorb as much dye as they could and then let them dry out and then bundled them up into a giant, um, like a giant sushi roll almost with the sticks all laid out in different color patterns all the way through the textile, and then rolled it up really nice and tight and then over dyed the whole thing again. So was very happy with the end result. Um, once I had dyed it in one direction because the colors on the inside are dyed by the sticks only, the inside of my tightly woven bundle are dyed by the sticks only, but the outer portion where the it's sitting in dye is the bundle is sitting in dye. It's a very weird sounding process. I'm listening to myself talk and it's very strange. <laughs> the outer side of the bundle picks up 
the other colors, the color that you're adding in addition to the sticks. So once it's all dried, rinsed, dried, and the sticks are ready to go, I re-roll it from the other end. So now the outside is the inside of my giant bundled roll. So it's all rolled up with all again with the sticks laid in. And then that was it after that second die, I was very happy with it. So it has a series of horizontal marks across it that it reminded me of that sort of blurry feeling that you get when you're looking through a rainy window. You know, everything's kind of blurry. Now, I am aware that rain does not go horizontally. Well, most of the time does not go horizontally, but it just, I decided to work it horizontally because that's the way the lines went. But um, this piece is hand stitched and it's hand stitched a lot. And it's been, it was great fun to do. I, I do love a lovely session of hand stitch. And this one kept me, kept me really quiet for a long time. I called it Hana no Ami, and very many apologies for the pronunciation. I am quite sure that's not right. Um, it apparently literally translates as flower rain. And it's um, the phrase that uh, when cherry blossoms are viewed on a rainy day, that this is what you would see. So it just suited what I wanted to say about it. The navy blue skies, but lots and lots of cherry blossom. And then as it's, they're falling down and getting towards the bottom, they're not quite so pretty in their coloring. So that's it. That's, that's great. Thank you so much, Catherine. It's, uh, I have to say, um, we see a lot of artwork in here and uh, whenever textile artists are involved, it's uh, the most innovative and interesting uh, techniques and just the ways to come up with how to make shapes and colors and lines and stuff. Um, it's, it's very cool, very inspiring. Okay, so our next work of art is, uh, is by Judy. Judy, please tell us about your piece. Well, I have to start by saying that I live in New Westminster, east of Vancouver, and I am surrounded by high rises. And they are, I lived in one for a while as well when I moved out here. They're, uh, I have a love hate relationship with them. Um, I think that they're beautiful. Uh, the night look at them with the glittering lights is stunning. Uh, but I really question how they relate to the landscape and how much of that landscape I could see eventually. So here I lucked onto a commercial print that I have been living with for three years at least and treasuring every little bit of it. It's such an unusual print. I wanted to show you a little bit of it here. So the value changes from really dark at the bottom of the print to really light at the top. And in this one, I've chosen to use a kind of dark value in the background. And then I wanted to juxtapose that with the kind of nature um, scene of aisles of these cherry blossom trees that Vancouver's planted over the years. And the way that the buildings kind of are the exact opposite of nature. So it's like <clears throat> hard and soft and yin and yang. And here I'm, I also found a wonderful commercial print of these cherry trees and the scale happens to work well together. So I've been using these two prints um, for a long time now, a couple of years and making um, lots of interesting shapes. This one is 12 inches high and 24 inches wide. And the <clears throat> background is one piece of fabric and the trees are one piece of fabric, uh, a different piece. And I've cut some holes through those trees and you can see the background coming through in some places just to make it look a little more realistic and to torture myself a little bit uh, by doing a lot more hand applique. So the edges are all hand stitched and needle turned. Oh, Stephen's having fun. <laughs> Uh, in the foreground, I at first used another piece of that fabric, but the scale didn't seem right. I wanted something that looked a little bit bigger. I needed a change of scale from the very, very tiny windows in, in the wall in the background to a bigger scale. So I ended up going back to a stash of plaids and checks that I've had around for a very long time and making little separate um, shapes 
that are finished individually. So each of those little buildings was finished separately. And then I could move them around and play with them on the design and uh, figure out which ones I wanted where. Um, each one is um, stitched to the next when I finally decided. And the um, material that I use to shape them is um, Peltex, which is a plastic material that you iron the edges to. So I am, unlike Catherine, going in the opposite direction, less and less stitching in some ways, and as little hand stitching as possible. So in this one, I have a tremendous amount of machine stitching, and I just seem to be married to it. I'm in love with my sewing machine, and I can sit for hours and do the stitching, and I kind of zone out and think about trees, um, the environment, um, buildings, how I relate to all of this stuff. It gives me time to plan the next hanging as well. Uh, when I got towards the end of this, I wanted to know whether to put some light in the windows. A lot of these windows are painted in the foreground. Uh, some have just graphite, um, which is permanent on fabric when you iron it. Uh, some of them have a little metallic sheen that I used um, puffy paint from Michael's craft store and um, added just a little bit of color there. So there's a lot of different uh, techniques going on in the foreground. And it, it's three dimensional in a way because it sits on top of the trees and those trees sit on top of the buildings in the background. So it's, it, and the whole thing, I tend to uh, mount work on um, a stretch canvas and the canvas itself becomes a part of the work when I stitch my finished work to that canvas. So this is a, a smaller piece, this one's 12 by 12, same fabrics, but quite a different composition. Um, I'm just enjoying this, the process and kind of the idea of, of these buildings. And do I want to accent the building's windows in the background. I decided to just leave them as they came from the print. But in this case, um, I wanted to soften the background a bit. And I used a silver metallic um, set of color fabric paint and a, a brush that I would dry brush. I dry brushed it on and just kind of um, grind it into the, the background. It's kind of a Japanese stenciling technique. And that softens the image just behind the trees. So it's a little more ambiguous. It looks like there's some radiance or maybe some mist coming in there. So it's, um, it's kind of very realistic um, looking. It's almost a digital print of the tree and the buildings and then kind of abstract in the front. So it's kind of a fun project for me, this one. Excellent. That's fantastic. Thanks so much, Judy. <laughs> Insights are, are pretty great. That's amazing that that's kind of the way uh, that that fabric came. It died in those, in those colors and shapes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and yeah, this photo doesn't really show off the, the silver sparkles that Judy was talking about. Uh, uh, it, it looks really, really cool when you get to see it in person, how shiny it is. Okay, so our uh, next piece is uh, is by Deborah Deborah Zibert. Please uh, tell us about this this really beautiful piece. Okay, I'm gonna unmute. I, am I unmuted? Yeah. Am, I, am I live now? Okay, so I, I just want to just echo uh, your comments, uh, Stephen. That <laughs> I called Judy's piece the drama piece. We put it over the fireplace. <laughs> just seemed to be the right place for it to be. So I think that's where it still is. I'm not sure, because uh, I haven't been down to the gallery since we had uh, done the original plan. Um, like, like so many uh, stitchers, uh, I, I, I love stitch. Uh, it's my passion. Um, I have usually many, many, many projects on the go. Uh, I have a stash that is uh, one that is intended for the future. I, I always think that there's going to be some way that I'm going to be able to incorporate whatever it is uh, that I might want to do. So there's lots of ideas percolating. And I do now, uh, <laughs> actually, I, I made a comment once that um, 
the it seemed to me that the call for cherry blossoms was really short in time. And I remember being kind of admonished and said, well, you know, it happens every year. So like, <laughs> what's the problem? <laughs> and I think it was Bonnie who said that, like, you know, it's coming every year. So like, like that, that doesn't seem like a very valid complaint. So uh, every year, uh, right about this time, I start thinking about the next cherry blossom <laughs> so that I, I don't run short of time. Um, and in, in the year of before, uh, I'd actually been doing some uh, researching with regards to the tradition of the cherry blossom and the connections and the linkages that there were between Vancouver and Japan and the revered uh, cherry blossom. And certainly there's a really strong cultural association with Japan, uh, an equally strong but very different uh, focused uh, association with uh, China. But what, whichever country or wherever the cherry blossoms are, I think everybody agrees that when they first start coming out, you start to feel happy. And, and that feeling of joy and happiness takes over the city. And everybody just feels like, whoa, we've gotten through our rainy gray skied winter and look at the beauty that we're surrounded with. Um, as I said, I really like traditional stitch and, and this piece in particular was inspired a little bit about the history uh, that's associated with cherry blossoms. And I was aware that there was a story that would, was circulating. I hadn't kind of dug into it at all, but I researched this myth or this legend that was apparently associated with um, George Washington and uh, his son who was given a, a hatchet when he was six years old and had chopped down this very revered cherry tree. And this, th this was a, such a dramatic event for the father because this tree had been chopped down that he cherished so much, but that the fellow who was the culprit with the, with the hatchet, the six-year-old owned up right away and said, yeah, it was me, I, I did it. Uh, and that over time became associated with that, think, that, that thinking of uh, honest Abe, you're honest Abe if you come right out front and say, this is, this is what this is all about. It, for me, th this particular piece was as associated with a new love that I had with my stitching, which was gold work. And those who are familiar with my work know that I've been playing with gold work in this last little while. Um, and so I wanted to incorporate my joy with working with stitch, my joy with working with gold threads, and this legend or this reverence for uh, the cherry blossom. And, and also try to reflect the, the beauty and that, that there is in nature in this sense of renewal and joy that's associated when the masses of the blossoms take over our city. I mean, it really is breathtaking and it, it represents kind of a new beginning, but it's short lived joy. So that my sense was I wanted to capture it when it was at its peak before there were any blossoms on the ground. So my starting place for this particular piece uh, was to go through my stash. Uh, I used to be a quilter long, long, long time ago, um, but I, I've, I've, I only inherited, I think, or, or kept with me the one thing that quilters all enjoy, which is to have a stash. And so I have a stash of hand dyed fabrics. We um, <laughs> meet with my classmates, which I graduated from. Uh, in my diploma work once a year and we dye ourselves crazy uh, for the whole weekend. And so I dug in my stash and came across this piece, which was just perfect, I thought, for a cherry tree, which I wanted to pay homage to. Uh, and then also in my stash, I happened to have been lucky enough to get um, some gold threads that were hand painted uh, from Japan. So it was a factory that was closing down and I lucked in and made a connection with the fellow who was selling these threads and we made a deal and he shipped them to me, which was way more than one person 
um, could use in a lifetime, but I managed to uh, secure a promise from all of my fellow artisans that I would share, that we would share the cost and we would share the lot that, that came. And in this lot were these hand painted uh, gold threads. So if you look at the gold work, what you'll see is that that gold has been very meticulously hand painted different hues of browns and greens um, and blues and different shades of copper. And I thought, wow, that is just like so uh, reminiscent of a tree trunk. And I, I thought it would really represent the splendor uh, of the tree. Um, so I used the ground that I'd selected, um, and which was hand dyed linen, and then looked to see how I could show off the richness of these very, very special gilded threads. Um, honestly was inspired just to try and capture that moment, which is really only about two weeks before the petals start to fall. Uh, there's all manner of pinks and whites and shades of pink and reds uh, in terms of the knots. There's sloppy knots and colonial knots and French knots and any kind of knots you can think of uh, to, to try and create the, spletch, the, the splendor, the, the, the absolute uh, burgeoning blossoms. Uh, before again that they, they fall. So uh, in the end, um, it was, uh, I, I think, a success. Um, I, I call my stitching my stolen moments. Um, it, it's, it, it's that two hours that I reserve for myself at the end of the day, and they do nothing but happily stitch. Uh, and this was the end result. And it, I, I think it, I think it succeeded in telling the story that I want to tell, which was uh, cherry blossom time uh, is a time of happiness and joy. And that's, that's it, that's the piece. <laughs> that's great, thanks so much for that, Deborah. Yeah, no, it's a, another fantastic uh, piece. This whole exhibition is full of wonderful things. Um, oh. <laughs> Just uh, some things from the chat for a minute. Uh, Annie Hunt says, hello everyone. So delighted to be here for the opening. Uh, Don Meyer says, hi, Catherine. Uh, Gail Collins says, hello to everyone. Uh, Maureen Tempest again says, hi. Uh, Annie, Annie Hunt again, she says, Catherine, you did a great presentation on artists and images for the North Shore Needle Arts this last month. So I good did. job, Catherine. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Carol Mooney says, uh, is it possible to book a time to view the art or is it first come first serve? Good question, Carol. It is uh, first come first serve. Uh, but uh, as I said, you know, 20 to 25 seems to be our max throughout the five hours we're open a day. So you're probably pretty guaranteed to, to not have to wait to, to come on in and see the show. Um, Jackie Morgan says, uh, please advise if works are for sale or not and what the price is. Works are for sale. Um, some of them are not um, and some of them are. Um, so for that, uh, to come in and see the whole exhibition and to know the pricing, you'd have to come in. Um, if you had specific questions about the pieces that were uh, we just talked about, you can contact us. Uh, the email is in the description, West Van Arts Council. Uh, at shaw.ca, you can uh, give us an email there if you wanted to ask about a specific piece. Uh, and Leslie Barnes says, Deborah is the tree trunk couched thread. Uh, yes, that, that is the traditional uh, gold work technique of couching those threads down. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and Joan Dev 108 says, hi, Terry, beautiful pieces, everyone. Uh, Anne DeVee says, again, hi, Terry, beautiful pieces, everyone. I especially love Terry and Judy's pieces. So that's nice. Okay, I think there's our video. Now we're gonna take a quick tour of the exhibition. All right. As you come in, you get this really, this really great overview and get to see kind of all of the colors and textures together. 
just down there. Down on the piano as you come in from the waterfront, there's a, a great book that comes every year with bios from all of the artists and there's some business cards. Some pretty, each piece is completely different from the last, as you'll see. Yeah, lots of different things, you know, there's photo transfers, there's braiding, yeah, it's so many different techniques. It's very cool. And cool ways of displaying, um, like this beautiful um, banner that's just up on this like raw piece of, of wood, this little branch from some tree. These, these cool contrasts between sort of abstract and semi-abstract pieces and then to something to these more uh, slightly representative works. It's, it's pretty fascinating. And then these are, these are the jurors pieces. It's it's fun to have the uh, the one painting amongst all of the uh, all of the other textile pieces. Well, a lot of them have paint on them, but it's it's pretty fun to have that one solo painting. And just trying to capture the length of uh, <laughs> of Catherine's piece. And you get to come to all these wonderful sculptural pieces in the center of the gallery. It's great. It's great doll, this lovely lady with her hat and her parasol and this adorable little bear. Uh, this is also by Deborah. Felted, those felted birds and, uh, and flowers. That was uh, by Potter, who was one of the other uh, generous artists who gave her time uh, to help uh, display, set up the display. And there's every, every surface has some artwork on it. The piano even has uh, this very cool uh, book, uh, this great textile cover. Um, and there's really interesting pages on the inside. Um, we've got gloves for you to open up and, and rifle through it and see all of the, the very interesting book bindings and textile pieces inside. And Deborah, yes, Judy's piece stayed above the fireplace. And these, these really fun felted cuffs and these, these cool ceramic display pieces that are also for sale. I just realized that a, a bunch of the artwork we talked about tonight was kind of all grouped together. And then uh, in, our, in our window seat, there are these, these, really beautiful, these really beautiful pillows with these whimsical birds.
we ran out of space. We had to bring in a uh, bring in a uh, an easel to display this this final this final beautiful piece. That's, uh, that's the exhibition. It's it's pretty wonderful. Yeah. So please come on in and. Uh, at the Silk Purse Art Center. Waterfront uh, details are in the description of the video. Uh, again, we're open Thursday through Saturday from 12 to 5, Sundays uh, 12 to 4. Did Steve have, have we lost him? I think so. I, I think, think he's so. left us here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you chose you chose uh, Catherine and Deborah. Um, you've chosen an amazing amount of um, art and the textures and everything. I, I used to be um, Hannah. Um, Baltimore album kind of quilt kind of gal and put in some silk ribbon and stuff so putting in the textures with tapestry has been really exciting especially working with this show and it takes from now until the next show <laughs> <laughs> and I think Catherine you've been been pointing the the um the photography at me, I resemble that remark. Of, <laughs> but I think I've found a photographer now. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's just such simple things. The modern technology that we all have in our phones now mm -hmm. is really all that you need. Um, I used to have a photographer shoot my work, but I'm doing it myself now. You're doing I'm, it with your phone? I'm doing it I with am. my I phone. Am. And too. the quality of the phone is good enough oh. to have gotten me into exhibitions. So I'm okay with that. It's just a few simple things to know about how you're moving it through your, through your laptop or through your computer and preparing it to send on. It's really simple. We'll talk, Patty. And Thank you so to be much. Lighting. In your phone now. It's so, technology has just helped us out so much with all of that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's been, it's been a, a, something I've done personally to understand and then acting as a juror and you're looking at photos and you just can't see this beautiful work because the quality of the photograph isn't, isn't good enough to zoom in. It's just really frustrating. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. What I think piece? smaller pieces are um, easier to photograph, um, but the the person that uh, had it, the person I would give it to would have a tough time translating. They're more in, of a a watercolorist, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and and with multimedia, but te textures and textile is so different for photography. Um, I don't have a problem with my cell phone necessarily, but I didn't realize that you would take them with, with that, with a little more. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, um, I do all mine with my phone now. Okay. I mean, Very I have the big camera put away. I haven't touched it in a year, just using my phone. It's just been great. Yeah. So. Um, Got to go back to Deborah and Julie. The, um, well, everyone with the with the the knots and the the um, <laughs> couching and the perspective. Everybody's got the perspective right on. I mean, from close and and all the you know even your your um, Julie your your um, um, your fabric that you chose for the, the foreground and then the fabric, the tie in the background the lines were so close. And so it would look so much farther away. Um, just everything, you know, the minor details, I have to weave all the negative space as well as the positive space, all the negative shapes as well as the positive shapes. And it's all done, you know, brick by brick and nothing afterwards, uh, but, what you have to do too is your background is 
is placed on first and then the embellishments are on top in your process because how you did it. And yes, you, it, it's, it's wonderful in winter time to, to keep busy like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of thought that goes into uh, which, which, which elements do you do first uh, when you're doing a complex piece, especially that's using gold work? Um, where you don't want to damage the gold because it's very fragile. So you want to make sure that you can lay it in place and then not subsequently, because you can't take it out once it's there. Um, and, and then trying to build around that. So you do have to do some thoughts about what's step one, what's step two, what's step three mm -hmm. um, in, in terms of getting the perspective. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's again, stolen moments and just time just for me. <laughs> so while I've got everybody here, I don't know how to use Instagram. I don't even know where Instagram is, but I would love to join the train. So I want to hop on the train for whoever is going to show us that Instagram thing. It's, it's pretty easy. And actually you can go to them without being on Instagram, but I think you really should because people really appreciate the artists really appreciate the, the the surface designers the stitchery people the you know the black work people the uh everyone i mean i would love to follow every one of you because um you know it's really um i, I don't even connectivity in the gallery here. So my computer Hello. keeps dying. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I'm glad that you were able to continue and have a wonderful <laughs> conversation. Thank you. The group of stitchers gets together. There's never a lack of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't let me interrupt. Continue. We Thank had a wonderful of thread of conversation while you were away. Oh, oh very good, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is really good. And same with the comments, everyone is saying thank you so much um, and that they thought it was great to hear uh, about the inspiring work and seeing the artwork. That's pretty great. So yeah, so I think we're, we're probably good to, to wrap up. Okay. So uh, thanks again for everyone uh, who tuned in tonight to watch. Um, really appreciate you. For having us. Thank you. Uh, you. A great idea. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Thank you. Thank you. And anyone is interested, um, <laughs> once this video goes up, uh, it will be up for you to watch again if you want to uh, hear a little bit more about what they said about any of their individual works or inspirations. You can do that. And, uh, and probably starting tomorrow, which would be Friday, uh, April 9th, um, in the description will be links to uh, artists' social media and our websites. Uh, oh. So that uh, you can check out more of their stuff then. Great. So thanks, thanks to uh, Steven. all of our amazing thanks. artists and organizers for sharing your thoughts tonight and sharing your artwork with us. Well, thanks, Stephen. Thank, thank, thank you, really Stephen. Nice oh, meeting you. Thank wonderful you. opening. Good to see you all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, have a great Good night. night. Good night. Good night.